So I was saying corporate governance is both a parent and an animal. And I'm sure many of you are not hearing about corporate governance for the first time. Thank you very much, Madam Gudra. Now, at my age, not many of you expect me to be speaking very loudly. So you'll bear with me. I have shouted in my days of youth and in my days of maturity. But these days, the focal codes, I think, also are going to retirement. I've been invited to come here and talk to to you ladies and ladies and ladies. I was not told I was going to talk to gentlemen. So the gentlemen, you can listen, but you are not my intended beneficiaries. That notwithstanding, I'm sure you'll get, you'll get away with some, some value. Now, corporate governance is both a parent and an animal. For us, when we went to school and college, we learned some English expressions, bus stops. I normally don't speak through microphones because I speak in, in halls and rooms where everybody can hear my voice. So I was saying corporate governance is both a parent and an animal. And I'm sure many of you are not hearing about corporate governance for the first time. But I would like you to carry a few new things from me. One thing is the origin of the word corporate governance. Corporate governance originates from the word corporate. Corporate. Corporate means something to, to do with a body. To incorporate is to form into a body. When you establish a company, they say it is incorporated. Therefore, it is formed into a body. So your businesses need to learn, learn to treat them as bodies. Just like your human body. I don't know how many lawyers are here. How many of us are lawyers? How many of us have studied? Uh -huh. Now, I'm not a lawyer, neither am I a student of law. I never stepped into law school. But by many years of experience have made me a lawyer of sorts. One thing I studied about from the law is that the companies and the businesses that you set up, whenever you go to the U, when I walked in here, the URSB was talking. Where is that gentleman? He has left. Okay. He, talk, he talked to you about registering your businesses. Or in other words, incorporating your businesses. So that they become bodies. Now in law, in law, they say a company, in law there are two types of persons. Because when you have a body and you reason, you are a person. So in law, a company and a human being are persons. In law, there are two persons. There is the natural person and the artificial person. All of us here gather are natural persons. The companies that we set up, left, right, and center, are not are artificial persons. But in law, they enjoy many of the characteristics of a person. Because in law, I can sue and I can be sued. Your company, as long as it is registered by the gentleman I found talking in that corner there, it can sue and it can be sued. 
my friend, the, the former speaker, Gudra, talked about borrowing money. A company can borrow as much as you can borrow from me, or I can borrow from you. So, it, please, the reason I'm saying so is that learn to, the first step in embracing corporate governance is to learn to treat your businesses as persons. Your business has emotions as much as you have emotions. What is the lady that talked about psychology? Ah, she left. They left me with the burden of explaining these things. So your business has emotions. And because of these emotions, that person and that that parent and that animal called corporate governance came into existence. To show people, to show business owners and those who are employed in those business, the principles by which they must run those business. So corporate governance is a concept that shows us how businesses are governed and they run. Now, I'm going to avoid you to use very, very, very technical terminology. I want everybody to understand every word of what I say. And if you don't understand, please put up your hand, however far you are. My eyes still can see. Wherever I go to the eye, eye specialist, it says, you can read far. I can see the good leisure farm from there. Even the small letters, transforming knowledge into business. Some of my young people here cannot read that far. So when you put up your hand, I will see it. Don't get out of here without having understood the word of what I said. Are we together? Yes. So, the reason you are here is so that you can have businesses that are successful. Some of you have businesses, some of you, others are intending business persons. How many have running businesses here? How many have running businesses? Even if you have, even if you have one chick that you are raising and you expect it to lay eggs after some time, that is the early beginnings of a business. My dear friends, don't despise your businesses because they are so small. Small is beautiful. The lady that was here before me introduced to me, but I was praying that she would not even mention me in her speech. I felt, I felt honored. I've worked with that lady in the early beginnings of her journey. I was in Rwanda, and she came to Rwanda to deal in second-hand clothes business. I was a consultant there, I was a contractor there, and then I had second-hand clothes business. So the things she was telling you, this lady is very candid and very straightforward. She told you the truth. Because I've seen this lady when she was almost a non-entity. And I was somebody. And now she's more than somebody, and I'm still somebody. So that is the journey that we want all of you to, to take. The journey that start, begins from, starts from humble begins, beginnings and leads you to, to, the, to the apex. I hope you all understand the apex. Don't you? So corporate governance is that parent that is going to lead you to that apex, running your business. Corporate governance. Governing that body that you call your company, that person must be governed. Because setting up a company alone is not enough. Are we together with the principles that we all know? Principles that were taught by our parents.
principle number one. If you are setting up your business, if you intend to set up a business, or you have set up one already, and it, it is run, ask yourself, am I honest? Am I honest? Now, honest is, does not stop at not taking other people's money. Honest goes beyond that. Honest begins with yourself. That English saying says that charity begins at home. Honesty is like charity. It begins with yourself. If you are not honest with yourself, you cannot be honest with others, nor with your business. Many of you start up small businesses. A chicken lays the egg. One egg you eat, the other one you sell. You have not been honest. You are not honest to the chicken. You are not honest with yourself. You are not honest with your resources. Let us lay the first two eggs, sell them. Feed it. Let us lay another egg, another four eggs, sell them. You can do away without eggs, but because you see eggs around your house, and you think that it's the time for your children to eat eggs, not yet. I started eating eggs when I finished primary school. I started eating eggs when I finished primary school. And there were eggs there. We would see them. We would hunger for them. So please, don't be enticed. Don't be lured. Don't fall victim to dishonesty. I said, be honest with yourself, be honest with your resources, be honest with your business. Number one. Number two. Transparency. I know good I told you a lot of things about not disposing everybody, everything. But he did talk, she didn't tell you that you don't be transparent. Transparency does not mean that you strip yourself bare. When I'm talking to mature people, I, I just put out the word, I said, transparency does not mean that you strip your business naked for everybody to see everything in it. No. Transparency means that please make sure that what should be seen is seen. Are we together? What the law requires you to disclose, disclose. What you do that is good, tell it to the others. The best example of transparency I can give you is good Rahuz here, the lady. She told you everything about her business. That has to be told. And I can assure you, there is a mountain of secrets of her business that she did not disclose. So please learn to be transparent by disclosing that which must be disclosed. Let the others see it so that they judge you, so that they give you advice. So honesty, transparency. The third one is accountability. And that's one of the worst animals in corporate governance. What do we mean by accountability? Can somebody tell us what accountability means? I'm sure all of you ladies have gone to school or to college. Who can tell us what accountability Do we have more than one microphone here? Good one. We have more than one microphone. Because me, I normally don't, I don't teach, I don't lecture like a good, my, my, my daughter, good bra. I always turn down opportunities to lecture because I don't like to be lecturing. I like to be sharing knowledge and to be interacting. Can we have a spare microphone? DJ. But we need DJ. Okay, 
the debt will stop down. Accountability is not about being an accountant. When you ask most people the accountability, they say being able to count your money. No. Accountability comes from the expression to render account. When people have entrusted you with their resources, you must explain to them how those resources have been used. Together. And there is a big temptation here in most businesses, even in your own personal business. How many of your own business on their own, single handedly? Hands up. There is one hand there. Two, three, single handedly. It's not a company, it's not a partnership, you see? Yes. Now, I'm always asking the question I own my own business. To whom must I render accountability? Is it possible to render accountability to yourself? Is it possible? I had an emphatic yes. Where did it come from? Good. Huh? Did you say yes? I asked how many people own their businesses single-handedly, without, without partners, without shares. Uh -uh. Then you don't own it single-handedly. Uh -uh, I am talking, <laughs> talking about registered businesses. But even if your business is not registered, it is a business. You have to render accountability. So the question I asked, is it possible to render account to yourself if it is your own business? It is your money. How do you account render account? How are you account how do you maintain accountability? How do you hold yourself accountable to yourself? Yes, my dear. <laughs> you have to you have to you have to keep record of your progress thank you very much Andra. counterbalance starts starts with the keeping records how many of you at the end of every day go home pick a pen and a paper and write down the numbers of the day's work how many it is your own business. Who is there to challenge you? It is your money. It is your chicken. It is your clothes. It is your goods. Do you sit down? How many sit down every day at the end of the business day and write down what you purchased, what you sold, and what you keep in your business? Because most people write down the money. Being accountable does not mean you write down how many, how much money you have sold. Therefore, you see that yesterday you sold 500, today you sold 1 million. Therefore, your business is growing. No, it is not growing. Accountability is a fool. It is a fool scope of things you must do. I talked of a business, it was simple. You have goods in your shop, therefore you bought them, therefore you have stock. You sell them, therefore you have sales. When you sell, you get money, therefore you have revenue. So the numbers must cover those three. And then learn to add and subtract. Don't think that the million you made today is your money. Your business money is not your money. Are we together? Your business money is not your money. It's your business's money. We said the business is a person in law. So don't take away your business's money. You are stealing from your business. So, honestly, the second one was 
Transparency. The third one is? Uh -huh. The fourth one is responsibility. Now, responsibility has two hearts. There is responsibility by the English dictionary. Most of you went to school and were using dictionaries to learn the, the meanings of words. I always tell people when I'm talking that some of us were privileged. In my days of schooling, before many of you were even thought of by the Creator, before even you, some of your parents were even born, I went to primary school. I never went to. I never went to pre-primary. There was no pre-primary in my days. When you clocked five years, you went to P1. I went to P1 in, at age four because my elder brother Martin, when he clocked five, he went to P1, and we were two. I could not stand staying home alone, so I would sneak and follow him. And eventually, I ended up in a college. Nowadays, we had a college and a school. Are we together? These days, you learn from colleges and schools, but scattered everywhere. But in my days, we had two colleges and two schools. If you want to send me to college, it's true, you I went to. Or to King's College, would do, then you went to college. I've given five minutes. I've not even covered a, 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 a knuckle of the thing of what I want to tell these people. I'm just talking to them about the principles. Okay, I will, have, I will leave the story of the college for another day. Now, so we have, we have talked about responsibility. Accountability. The next one was responsibility. You must be responsible for your actions. The reason I talked about colleges was because responsibility and corporate governance means something different. Responsibility means that you must be ready to answer for your actions and your decisions. You are responsible for the decisions and the actions that you take in your business. And many businesses fail because people don't assume responsibility. Now, number three is that your business must be both governed and managed. Are we together? That's why you call it corporate governance. Your business must be governed and managed. Governed means that you need some high authority. If it is your single business, you are the governor of your business. And then you employ others, whether family members or not. Those are the managers of your business. So it is the same model. Your business must have a structure. Are we together? Are we together? Now, the interactions between those structures, between the, govern, between the governing body and the management are what corporate governance is all about. And if you don't have corporate governance in your business, if you don't ascribe to the values we talked about, your business is not likely to stay as long as Gudra's business is. She was talking about. We have had many businesses that made it to the top, and we don't see them anymore. They are not here. And we have businesses that have stood the test of time. Are we together? So I'm here to tell you, my young grandchildren, if you want your business to stand the test of time, take time to understand what corporate governance is, beginning with the values and then to the structure. Many organizations fail because of the structure. They have a board, the directors are kings and queens. 
kings and queens of your business. When you are a director of a business, the board of directors are the servants. Are we together? When you are, served, when you are appointed to serve on the board, you are the servant. Though you have authority, you are appointed to serve. So please, serve the business. Learn to serve your business. If you have set up your business, it is your business, learn to serve your business. You are the servant. I think Jesus said somewhere that if you want to, to, if you want to lead, you must serve. Who knows the Bible better than I hear? If you want to lead, you must serve. Are we together? So if you accept that you are the servant of your business, you are going to respect it similar way a servant respects the master. Whether it's your business, whether it is a business where you have put shares, as long as you are appointed to be in that business, you are the servant. Corporate governance tells us to be fair. Fairness. Fairness. Be fair to your business and be fair to the people that you have employed in your business. Pay them fairly and pay yourself fairly. I have seen businesses fail because directors overpaid themselves. Because they had the decision-making powers, they overpaid themselves. Then the business is corrupt, whether they are private or public. Be fair. Pay, pay fairly. And also, paying fairly means that don't underpay. Your business should not be a place where people are exploited. People should enjoy working for you. Then people will add value to your business because they associate with your business. There are many businesses where people come every day. There are times when I have an appointment in Kampala and I'm on the Nigeria road by 5 o'clock. There are not so many cars on the road. But there are people footing their way to Kampala to work. And how much are they paid? 10K. Uh -huh. A person walks from Bulindo to industrial area every day and earns 10K. Some of these are these young ladies that serve us food in Kampala. How much do they earn? Do they earn per plate? 10,000 per day. So please, be fair. Are we together? I think the last thing I can tell you, as far as corporate governance is concerned, is that obey the law, comply. Compliance is a key requirement of the business. You may think that the law does not see you. The law does not have the eye, but in English they say the law has a long arm. The law has a long arm. Make sure your business does not break the law. And make sure that you don't break the law, even outside your business. Because whatever you do outside your business reflects on the image of your business. The managing director of company so-and-so was found in a lodge somewhere. That is image. Once the image of your business is damaged, your business cannot survive the test of time. I could talk about a lot of things, but I wanted to share those few with you. Now, since you go to school, let's revise before I, I hand over the microphone. The values of corporate governance number one are? Are we listening? Honesty. Transparency, accountability, 
fair, uh, responsibility came first. Responsibility and fairness. And then we said, what else did we say? You must have a structure. However small your business is, make sure it has a structure. This is my business. This is my capital. These are my employees. This is my premises. Number four. Louder. Governance. Governance. Learn to govern your business. Separate yourself, if it's your business, from management. If it is a company, you are on the board, separate yourselves from management. Is that all you say? Directors should be servants, should consider themselves as servants, not, not masters. Organizations where directors thought they were masters have either collapsed, or they have stagnated, or they have constantly appeared in the press. Be in the press for all the wrong reasons, even if it is a small business. Ladies and ladies and ladies, that's as much as I can share you within the limited time. Next time we had an engagement, I will give you more. Thank you so much. Please don't leave.